We should be starting in 30 seconds. Good afternoon. I'm Treyon White Sr., Ward a Council Member and Chair of the Committee on Recreation Library Youth Affairs. Today is Monday, April the 3rd, 2023. We are meeting remotely using the Zoom platform. The time is now 12 o'clock at uh, p.m. I'm calling to order this agency budget oversight hearing. Today we have a budget, budget oversight hearing on the Office of Cable Television, Film, Music, and Entertainment. The mission of the Office of Cable, Television, Film, Music, Entertainment is to produce a broad and broadcast programming for District of Columbia's public, educational, and government access cable television channels and digital radio stations, regulate the District of Columbia's cable television services, and provide customer service for cable subscribers. Also support sustainable film, music, entertainment, creativity, creative, creative economy, and a labor market for District of Columbia. I look forward to hearing from the public and government witnesses today. Um, as I call the panel witnesses, they will be promoted from the audience to be on the panel. Uh, we have a set schedule and request that all witnesses are here to the allotted time. Um, all public witnesses will be allotted three minutes. Um, a and C's and government witnesses will be allotted five minutes to speak today. With that being said, we'll call our first panel of witnesses, uh, George Simpson, Spectrum Management, Tressa Smallwood, Megamind Media, and Denise Rolock Bonds, the Washington, Washington Informer. Okay, um, I don't see Mr. Simpson. Mr. Simpson and Ms. Smallwood are not present. All right, um, Ms. Denise, Denise Rolock Barnes, the Washington former. Good afternoon. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Thank you very much, Chairman White. It's a pleasure to be here and to speak um, for a few minutes on behalf of the Officer Cable Television, Film, Music, and Entertainment. Uh, before your committee, <laughs> um, but it just goes to show how much they do. Um, I, I really could talk about, you know, my long history of um, engagement with the office from, you know, hosting Reporters Roundtable to, um, you know, just being at events covering um, as publisher of the, or reporting uh, as, as for the Washington Informer. and. Um, uh, just being seeing the office of uh, the staff all over the city, even as um, one of the co-coordinators for the MLK holiday uh, peace walk and parade where uh, they always come out to cover. So I, I think we're really blessed to have um, a cable station that understands uh, why it's important to, um, you know, keep our local government's face and message in front of um, the voters of the District of Columbia and all res residents of the district. Uh, I remember once upon a time when um, uh, Mayor uh, Anthony Williams once talked about uh, getting rid of the Office of Cable Television because he thought it would just be a mouthpiece for the government. And I said to him, but you need that. <laughs> you do need that. So I think he got it and consequently you're still here. But one of the things that I'm most excited about as of um, three years ago, uh, the Office of Cable Television agreed uh, to host the Washington Informer Charities uh, annual spelling bee. Uh, this involves, uh, you know, it's a spelling bee that goes, that has students from all over the DC public, private, charter, uh, parochial and homeschools uh, they compete over a 
a three month period and uh, get to the citywide bee, which uh, was once hosted by Channel 4. Um, they had some major changes over there and we went to the Office of Cable and they welcomed us, which I thought was always the home for the spelling bee. I think anything that's educational, anything that's DC, it, uh, OC, the Office of Cable Television, OCTF and me is a, is a rightful place where it should be. So we've been welcomed there. The Spelling Bee, if I can add a little commercial, will be broadcast uh, next week. Um, we'll, give, we'll share more, more details. Uh, but this is the place where we can celebrate our young people. And they get a chance to come into the studio to see how it all how, how the cake is made, right? So it's a great partnership. I wanna thank uh, Latoya Foster, but also thank uh, former chair, uh, director Angie Gates, who opened the door to us. And it's a, it's a pleasure just to be here to speak with you and the committee to say that um, uh, whatever support uh, you can provide them, the government can provide them, I think is uh, deserved. That's it. Tried to stay in my Thank three you so minutes. much. Sure. <laughs> All right. I appreciate that. Uh, Mr. Simpson, uh, welcome. Um, go right ahead. Uh, thank you, Council Member White. Um, and, and I believe you know me as Ty. So I might give you my government name is George Simpson. So, so uh, let me just simply say my name is uh, George Simpson. I'm the president of Spectrum Management. Uh, I want to thank the Dir Director Foster for her team asking me to actually testify uh, on their behalf. It's not often that you find a facility management company testifying on behalf of the Office of Cable Television. Uh, however, I would like to thank you and City Council and the mayor for continuing to invest in our local cable television station. This is where I find out what's going on with DC. We know now we can turn on the television and get 300 plus channels and like, where are we gonna get the information we need for our residents? So I think that the service that the Office of Cable Television provide is critical, is critical to what's going on in the district. So to who are we? You know, Spectrum Management is a facility management, construction management, and real estate development firm. Uh, our core focus is facilities. Uh, we are a CBE firm that's been providing commercial, municipal, and federal uh, services to federal clients over 22 years. And we've been supporting the Office of Cable Television since 2015. Uh, we're proud of our long-term relationship with OCTV and the management of its infrastructure. We consider this building critical, you know, a critical facility in DC, just like the 911 call center. Our current contract provides consolidated maintenance services, which includes mechanical, electrical, plumbing, janitorial, landscaping. We also buy, provide building construction, tenant modifications, uh, and 24 hour like response services for our efforts. Uh, collectively, Spectrum currently provides over 4 million square feet of management in the District of Columbia which this gives us a unique opportunity to provide those emergency uh, services to OCTV on, on a quick, for a quick response. But Spectrum has been privileged to be the choice provider of facilities for Office of Cable Television for years now. And the reason why I think this is critical is because if you think about local programming, how, how like I, I learned how to hand dance on OCTV. So, so local community groups, organizations, uh, you're talking about promoting our local businesses, creates 202. I think I really believe that OCTV is a critical asset in our community and it's something that we should keep funding and expand the responsibilities for our local sports teams, our local athletes, our local musicians. And um, I just wanted to say on the record, and I actually wrote out a very nice piece of testimony, but I support them for the fact that they are representative of the citizenry, citizenry of DC on a daily basis. When other newscasts always talk about the negative impact of what's happening in our city, and that's always highlighted, our Office of Cable Television provides the highlights of what's going on with our residents in our city. So I will supply my testimony that's written. I full, I'm in full support of Director Foster and her team and what we're doing for Office of Cable Television. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh... I'm gonna jump back to Ms. Denise Rolock Barnes. Is she still here? Yep, I'm still here. Yep, I wanna thank you for your work um, that you do in the community and the legacy you are leaving and also giving um, 
a, a, a media outlet to another media outlet about getting positive, powerful stories and impacting the community in various forms. Um, even with, with Mr. Simpson talked about, it's very important. I wanted to ask you um, about the spelling bee mm -hmm. um, that's taking place. Uh, what is the process of working with, uh, I'm going to just call the Office of Cable Television for the sake of the <laughs> acronym. Um, um, and how long have this relationship been going on and how do you foster it? So this relationship started four years ago. Uh, as, well, as I mentioned, yeah. um, uh, NBC4 used to broadcast the Spelling Bee since its beginning. We're now in our 41st year. So for wow. 38 years, if I can do the math right, um, the uh, NBC4 broadcast the B. Uh, they, you know, went through some studio design or re redesign, shrunk and said, you know, we can no longer do it. So we went straight over to the Office of Cable Television and um, talked with the folks there. Um, and actually, in the beginning, four helped the team from Channel 4 helped Ayasa Cable Television to understand how to do this. Um, you know, our winner leaves here and then goes on to the National Spelling Bee. So what happens, um, 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 there's a, the, the school coordinator um, for DC Public Schools uh, begins the B process, or we begin the B process in August. It's at that time that we reach out to the Office of Cable. Our, our real question is a date. And we're always looking for, you know, that date that's, that allows um, our local winner to uh, get all of their details in in time to get to the national. So usually it's in March. It was amazing how we were able to, to pivot during COVID. We didn't, we, didn't, we didn't cancel the spelling bee. We did it, uh, Office of okay. Cable Television did a great job in allowing us to do it. Um, virtually. So we, the kids did it on a Zoom call and uh, we were able to work that out. We share within the rules. Uh, so once we get that final date um, established, then at that point we hold, um, I say weekly meetings to make sure that um, we are uh, on the same page with regards to how many kids are gonna participate, how many parents can come into the studio, how many guests can appear. We wanna make sure that you, you know, you're know you there um, and the council members and the school board members are there. We haven't, haven't had much success with that, but uh, we're gonna keep trying. And um, so we um, that process takes usually begins in January for the actual planning of the bee. And, uh, and then a date is established and um, uh, which was actually uh, March the 20, March the 18th. It was a Saturday, March the 18th that we did it um, a couple of weeks ago. So I don't know if I'm answering your question, but um, you know, it's, it's constant communications with the Office of Cable Television to get this set up and yeah. get the studio set up. And they design the yeah. studio, they do the artwork, all of that. Okay. I, I asked that because there are a lot of, uh, we are in the podcast phenomenon generation right now. And there are a lot of people who, you know, reach out to my office Office of Cable Television about how to utilize DCTV opportunities. So more so interested in the process of how you were able to foster that for the greater good of getting exposed, exposed for our young people. So people can see our talent in the city, you know, let them know we care about them. We, we this spelling bee that's been going on for over 40 years is, is a hallmark to the district. Um, and just, just trying to figure out the process of how that, that came from, you know, going mainstream TV to our local channels and just just happy it's still going, but just the process you had to work through to get to get there. And I heard you also reference um, uh, Angie Gates and also Miss Foster as well. Right. I think one of the, you know, as one who's also in the podcast business now, um, uh, digital um, video podcasting, but, you know, I, I know the Office of Cable Television's hands are, are full because they are everywhere all the time, you know, their team is. Um, there's hardly a DC event that happens where you will not see um, the team of folks that work there out covering. Um, but there may be, and I would think, you know, additional funding and what have you, you know, an opportunity to actually begin to train district residents in podcasting. 
Um, not a bad idea, actually. Um, but, you know, under the Office of Cable Television is also not only the government channel, but the school's channel and uh, a radio station. So um, there's lots of opportunities, and I don't know how many of our young folks in the city actually know it. I have seen or met interns from UDC and from Howard University that, um, you know, get a chance to work there. Uh, but it is an opportunity for district residents, I think, to learn more about the digital broadcast business and to um, speak with um, folks over there about, you know, what it is that they're doing and how um, they might learn to uh, do it better based upon um, the skills that folks there can share. I don't know if they're doing it yet, but I like that idea. Yeah, sir. Sure. Appreciate that. Um, I want to jump to you, Mr. Simpson, real quick. Uh, are there any other programs that you would like to see um, that need some further collaboration? Because I know that the the agency does a lot. You know, I watch. You know, not as a council member, as a council member, they needed a presentation, which they're probably going to do one today about this host of variety of things and so much diversity, so much reach. I just want to know from you. You know. Um, What's your thoughts on that? I, I'm gonna I'm gonna switch my hats. Um, this is a semi like a selfish plug, but in the same breath, I've been talking to um, Director Foster, and we've been talking through Events DC and a lot of other social organizations about like second tier sports. Like you know, like the I think the Office of Cable Television has a a, a mecca of youth sports related activities in the district right now, and highlighting some of our athletes. Um, and uh, like a, 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 the sports broadcast aspect of it, I think could be critical to what's going on. Uh, not only do we have like our, our top sports, basketball, baseball, football, soccer, but now you have rugby, cricket, ultimate frisbee uh, and uh, women's soccer. So um, I, I think that the program is out, outstanding right now. The question is how can we expand this and give them more bandwidth to kind of like represent and highlight more what's going on in the District of, of Columbia. Got it. Um, you also referenced that you have a uh, you submitted a your testimony. Did you say it was lengthy? Uh, is there anything that you left out that you would like to share that you didn't get to talk about? Um, and you know, just coming from not speaking from the heart. Uh, and I, I get people blame me for speaking from the heart uh, all the time. <laughs> so, 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 yeah. literally, you know, making sure, and our, our primary day to day business is making sure their facility is up and running, their equipment is top notch, and uh, nothing goes down. So, our, our thing is our single point of failure is making sure they can go out and deliver the products for DC. Uh, I just want to say in my testimony that. You know, it's positive programming and no one ever talks about this. You know, when we watch the news, just think about how many negative articles and negative situations are coming out every time we watch the news. But when I can turn on, when I turn on the office of cable television, it's always what's going on in the District of Columbia. So I would love to see us pretty much allocate additional resources so they can expand programming to be have a more of a positive spin for our residents than it is for me to always have to turn to the major naval major networks, you know, and pretty much see so much negative. Activity. So, I mean, this is just my selfish plug to simply say, keep the positivity coming, highlight our citizenry, and, and let's 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 grow it. Got you, and I think that I hear a lot of sentiments from our seniors that share that uh, they, you know, some seniors watch it all the time and they keep up what's going on with policies, right. laws, you know, uh, budgets through the Office of Cable Television, and so I think it. it you know, uh, that that generation has been locked in more than uh, that's that more than most. And so the information is there. Um, and I, one of the other things that I agree with on was about sports. I think that uh, if a lot of young people need the opportunity to get exposure. Mm -hmm. um, when I when I came up, I played high school sports in the district. I played varsity basketball from 10th to 12th grade. And, uh, you know, a lot of the sports was on DC 28. Was that it? DC 28. Um, and, you know, it was an opportunity for you to see and your family to see you on TV. And that was real big. And so I think you um, referenced that as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. And you're right. We had All one right. sports segment. Well, thank you guys for joining us. 
Yeah. So thank you guys for joining us this afternoon and for your testimony. Um, we look forward to following it up, um, doing our budget oversight hearing with the director, with Director Foster Foster and her team. If you have any questions or comments, please contact our office and our committee staff. And please submit your recent written testimony if you haven't, um, because we have other members who will be chiming in and reading as well. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you. Now we will move to the segment of this hearing uh, with our government witnesses. Um, we will be joined today by Director Latoya Foster. She's the Director of the Office of Cable Television, Film, Music, and Entertainment. Um, and she also will be accompanied by um, Abu Bakr, Adikaram, Adiraham, Rahman, okay, Dietrich Dickens, Herbert Niles, Kanisha Davy, Lawrence Cooper, um, I'm not sure if Leroy Clay is joining, but uh, he may join as well. And we're asking all government witnesses, if you will be speaking at any time during this hearing, um, please uh, cut your microphone and screen on so you can be sworn in. It is the practice of this committee to swear in all of our government witnesses. Director Foster, real quick, is my sound delayed? No, I don't think so. Not on my end. Mm -mm. You're good to go. Okay, because it's coming delayed on my end. Okay, we'll figure it out. All right. Um, if everyone is, the government is, you can turn your mic on, turn your camera on and raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm on the penalty of perjury the testimony you're about to give to the Committee on Recreation, Libraries, and Youth Affairs is the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. I do. All right, Director, you can go ahead. Good, good afternoon. Welcome, everyone. You can start off with your opening statement. Thank you, Chairperson White. Good afternoon, Chairperson White, members of the Committee on Recreation, Libraries and Youth Affairs and Committee staff. I am Latoya Foster, the Director of the Office of Cable Television, Film, Music and Entertainment, and I appreciate the opportunity to testify to you today. The Mayor's Fiscal Year 2024 Budget and Financial Plan, A Fair Shot, which focuses on our city's comeback, makes significant investments in education, health, human services, housing, jobs, economic opportunity, public safety, transportation, and more. These investments reflect the key priorities identified by DC residents at budget engagement forums held during the budget formulation process and broadcasted by our Office of Cable Television, Film, Music, and Entertainment, also known as OCTFME. I would like to thank Mayor Bowser for her continued support of OCTFME's mission and activities and her leadership and vision for the District of Columbia. The Mayor's Fiscal Year 24 operating budget for OCTFME is $15.3 million. This total includes an allocation of $3.3 million in local funding, $12 million in special purpose revenue funds. The budget provides 58 FTEs to OCTFME. Nine of these positions will be supported with local funding and 49 will be supported by special purpose revenue funds. OCTFME will utilize the Mayor's Fiscal Year 24 budget resources to grow and support a sustainable creative economy and entertainment media industry, to promote Washington, D.C. as a world-class city and premier destination for entertainment and tourism, to manage and promote the Film Rebate Fund, to attract blockbuster movies and television productions to our city, resulting in more jobs and opportunities for D.C. residents and businesses, 
advance our 202 Creates program by creating job opportunities and marketing platforms to promote the talents and achievements of DC residents. Administer the Creative Economy Career Access Program, CCAP, which provides training and employment opportunities for DC residents with our partners and stakeholders in media and theater. Regulate cable providers and ensure that the highest level of customer service is administered to DC residents. And continue to develop and expand our award-winning television programming focused on affordable housing, education, public safety, media literacy, and the diverse culture, lifestyles, and talents of DC residents. As a division of OCTFME, the Creative Affairs Office, CAO, showcases and preserves DC's rich creative communities throughout all eight wards. OCTFME and CAO developed the GoGo People's Plan, which provides recommendations to support, preserve, and archive GoGo music and its culture across all eight wards. In fiscal year 23, in accordance with the plan, CAO distributed financial support of $1 million to artists, initiatives, and programs designed to promote the district's GoGo music, history, and culture. CAO also partners with key community entities to support and develop programming, policy, and various initiatives, such as Care for Creatives and Business Over Brand, that aid the creative community with resources, opportunities, and connections that help support a sustainable creative economy. OCTFME's broadcast production support team continued required maintenance activities. The most recent upgrade was in fiscal year 23 to the automatic captioning system. This system facilitates programming files for online viewing by government agencies and the general public, and it provides transparency and valuable information to DC residents. The DC Film, Television, and Entertainment Rebate Fund has provided creative economy jobs for DC residents and has made a positive financial impact on the district's local economy. Since Mayor Bowser reactivated the DC Film Rebate Fund in fiscal year 2016, OCTFME has awarded $11 million to 64 projects, including 29 from local production companies. The overall direct, indirect, an induced economic impact to DC from the 64 projects has been $161.1 million, and the projects have created 1,704 DC resident job hires and $6.5 million in total compensation to DC residents. In fiscal year 24, the mayor's submitted budget allocates $842,000 to support the DC Film Rebate Fund. OCTFME will continue to manage the fund and obtain a return on investment for the district. The Creative Economy Career Access Program, CCAP, is an innovative workforce development program that connects district residents from historically underrepresented communities with local creative economy training and mentorship from established creative economy employers. Now in its seventh year, the fiscal year 23 CCAP media class commenced in January 2023 and will provide paid on-the-job training for five DC residents. Since its inception, 202 Creates has saved DC residents an estimated $4 million by providing participants with free resources and space to work and create. To date, 202 Creates has welcomed over 1,500 entrepreneurs to community building events and has hosted over 190 in-person trainings and 30 virtual master classes. The 202 Creates Residency Program has welcomed 209 DC residents from all eight wards, serving a demographic that includes 70% of people of color. In closing, the resources allocated to OCTFME will play a vital role in the city's comeback, robustness, and vibrancy, provide DC residents an opportunity to reach and remain on the pathway to the middle class, and provide our youth with an opportunity to learn about non-traditional careers and businesses. I'd like to thank Mayor Bowser for her leadership and unwavering support of our agency, and I'd also like to thank you, Chairperson White, and this committee for being critical allies in OCTFME's mission. This concludes my testimony. My staff and I look forward to answering any questions you may have. Thank you. 
And I'm going to just add another line, Chairman White, because I did hear uh, some of the conversation you have with our uh, government witnesses, and it brought me back to something that I'm sure is near and dear to you as well. It is a statement that uh, both of our uh, mentors, um, Mayor for Life, our late great Mayor for Life, Marion Berry, said, the lion remains the king of the jungle when he can tell his own story. And as you know, that's what we do here at OCTFME. We make sure that our city, we are telling our own story through all of our platforms, from our television uh, stations, from our, uh, from our streaming network, from our radio, and with our creative platforms for our DC creatives, we're able to show the world what we are all about. We tell our story, and that's why we stay on top. I just had to add that because I thought about that when I was listening to your conversation. I went off script for a minute. Thank you. <laughs> no, all good, all good. Um, thank you. I guess one of the first questions I have in reference to the budget there, Director Foster, is about the 3% decrease in the budget. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to know from you, will this affect programming and staffing in any way uh, and a neg have a negative impact on, a, on all the great work you're doing there at the agency? Well, you know, and Chairperson White, thank you for that question. So, you know, it's just like in our own homes. We learn how to uh, still keep the train on the tracks with the funding and the resources that we have. Uh, so we recognize that we do have a slight decline as a result of the uh, ARPA funds reduction. But as a result of that, we still uh, know how to keep this train on the tracks and we know how to keep this moving uh, and our resources and programs uh, remain afloat, even though we are uh, going to have that reduction. Yes, I saw that was at 3%, uh, but I also note, note that there has been no change um, to your 58 uh, FTEs. And no, based sir. on this information, is it correct to assume that there's no anticipated need to fund an increase in staffing? Um, and are you fully staffed? We are fully staffed, uh, Chairman White, and I'll tell you, I can't say enough of this amazing team at OCTFME. They go above and beyond the call of duty every single day, and you can see it every single day. So the 58 FTEs that you see, uh, each one of those individuals works from sunup to sundown to ensure that, you know, we're telling our story here at OCTFME. Uh, right now, we do not see that we need to change anything, but if we do, we will make sure that we have conversations uh, with Mayor Bowser and her team and uh, Chairperson White, we will let you know the same. But right now, we think that we can uh, still uh, reach all of our objectives with the 58 FTEs that we have. And to answer your question, I know you may see a couple of them that you believe might be open on Schedule A, but all of those positions have been filled and the paperwork in that process has just been a little bit slow, but they are all filled at this point. Thank you. Um, we saw that your special purpose revenue fund increased by almost 250,000. What is specific resource or resources that uh, this revenue will be used for, if you can recall? Uh, I'm going to pass that over to Deitra Dickens, our Associate uh, Director of Operations. Thank you for that question. Um, these are funds um, with the projected special purpose, purpose revenue, franchise fees, um, PEG fees, film permit fees, um, and production support fees. Um, the agency's operation is primarily supported by the SPR funds, and these increases are primarily associated with um, year-on-year year -year salary and fringe benefits. Got it. Sorry, my computer is delayed a little bit, so bear with me. It's getting it's getting a little choppy. Wow. Um, thank you. Um, I also see that the largest FY24 budget increase um by the comptroller source group was uh, 128,000 from 106,000 FY23 um to 234,000 uh, for telecommunication services. Can you elaborate on the necessity of this increase, please? 
uh, I will call on uh, Abuka to uh, provide additional details there. Okay. Thank Chairman White. My name is Abukar Abdurrahman. I'm the Budget Director for Economic Development and Regulation Cluster. Um, that is really not, it's not a real increase, it's just a realignment of uh, that amount from other services and charges to the appropriate category in telecom. So in prior year, like in, in current year 23, was budgeted in uh, other services. Can you give a little bit more specific? Yes, that amount was is currently budgeted in this fiscal year in other services and charges, um, com com source like 40. Uh, but in 24, we're moving it to the appropriate category in telecoms. So it appears like an increase, but it really not an increase, but just a realignment. If you can send us a, a, a brief email on explaining that, that'd be helpful to our uh, my staff and our committee. That is Absolutely. something that we are uh, concerned about. Uh, uh, and just want to get clarity on it in writing so we can, you know, have some accountability. Um, we also noticed uh, that equipment uh, and, and rental decreased um, by almost 250,000. Um, and is this going to have a negative impact on uh, the pro productivity and the outreach and engagement in the community at all? We don't believe that will have a negative impact at all, uh, Chairman White. Uh, I will toss that to Abuka again for any additional details. But uh, as far as I can see, I don't see any negative impact that that will have uh, on any of our marketing or anything that we have to do here at the agency. Yeah, Chairman White, you know, that, that decrease yeah. is associated with the ARPA fund, you know, like the agency has 750K of ARPA fund, ARPA fund this year okay. that is going away in 24. That that is that amount is just coming off of that line. Yeah. So what happens is it's difficult to see uh what the federal dollars were versus the local dollars in reading the line items. So we don't we we know it's been decreased by a hundred percent. And so we just don't know how that affects the budget. And what areas, but we do understand that that uh, is happening all across most government agencies. And so we appreciate you sh sharing that um, with us because that's helpful for us to kind of track the performance um, with that. And so, Director, I, I do know that you are, you usually host a lot of events, you know, uh -huh. uh, 202 Creates does a lot of things. You all are just all over the place. And I'm just, uh, you know, concern about how those cuts can um, have a an impact on the productivity. Because what what we see is you all be doing phenomenal things, and we don't want this to drop at all. Nope. And so we're just trying to make sure, from budget standpoint, because you know uh, we, we're taking a hit, we're potentially taking hits down the road with the District of Columbia's yeah. government. And yep. we just want to make sure that everything is stable, for especially with our communication. You all have been most assist, consistent, even during the pandemic, of getting the word out to the community, especially yes. um, the COVID responsiveness, the, the TV. Yeah. Uh, I saw, I saw uh, you all were working out with our seniors on TV. That's right. I, That's right. I did a little bit. You know, I ain't going to lie. I said I did a whole <laughs> lot. I did a little bit of working out. Um, what was it Fit DC? Fit DC. Um, yeah, yeah. So those types of things are definitely needed during an era where most of our senior citizens are shut in or may just getting out, just getting back into the flow. Yep. But yep. I just wanted you to comment on that as far as the outreach and engagement and keeping that, those type of things up. And Chairperson White, let me assure you, your concern is my concern and our concern here at OCTFME, right? Uh, and we can assure you that, um, you know, though we are taking that uh, reduction as a result of the, uh, the federal payments that we will no longer receive, we are looking at ways uh, to identify where we can maybe have some public-private partnerships where we can uh, 
identify any additional funding to ensure that all of the programs that you have seen uh, over the many years that you will continue to see and that we will, be, we will be able to grow them, that we will be able to continue to have a platform for our DC creators, that we will continue to have training programs and opportunities for, uh, for our youth, for our residents across all eight wards, specifically for those east of the river. So we do understand where your concern is. Uh, and we are looking at a number of ways that we can uh, identify some public-private partnerships there so we don't see any interruption in any of the programs that we're doing. But we know no matter what, the show must go on. We know that we, all, we always reach high and we're gonna keep reaching high. So you will not see a change regardless. Thank you. And, and I know that uh, you guys have become a gatekeeper for um, just filming in the district and working with our federal partners on different mm -hmm. projects involving filming in the district. And I know um, I watch shows that may not be in the district, but I know there's an appetite to do more filming in the district. Mm -hmm. Is there an opportunity to increase revenue there with uh, the appetite to do more filming in the district? What's your thoughts on that, Director? Well, you know, what's interesting is that you're bringing that up at a time when we have not one but two films shooting right here uh, in D.C. as we speak. Uh, we have uh, Tracy Edmonds, award-winning producer, who's working with two of our local uh, producers and directors, African-American uh, power couple Chuck and Bree West. They are producing a thriller called Wake right here in D.C. right now. We also know that one of our government witnesses who wasn't able to join us today, uh, Tressa Smallwood, is also uh, working on a film. And currently she has uh, Vivica Fox in town and a number of others. So we actually have two films right now as we speak uh, that are working uh, right here in D.C., uh, taking our city to another level and putting our city on the map uh, as an entertainment mecca. I will turn to Associate Director Herbert Niles of our film division to uh, provide any greater detail about uh, resources in our film division. Well, well, thank you, Director, and thank you, Chairman, for that question. So, uh, you know, that question hits us uh, where we live. We're extremely excited about the support that Mayor Muriel Bowser uh, has provided the agency to give us those tools to bring those two projects uh, to the district. And, and to the Director's point, uh, the funding and support for the rebate fund, we, were, we would not be able to have those two projects in the district. They would be in Atlanta were it not for that program. And so we're very grateful for that program so that we can have DC-based African-American owned and operated production companies that can film and hire here in DC rather than having to do their productions in Los Angeles or Atlanta. Um, and to your point, it's, it's one of our top priorities. Uh, every every strategy meeting is about bringing more things here and not just bringing things here, but uh, finding ways that district residents can get access to interview to work as cast and crew on these productions. So um, it, it is it is something that's very important to us and we will continue to do that into the next fiscal year and the, the funding support that's been submitted uh, for the next fiscal year. Uh, is fully sufficient for us to continue the great work that we're doing this year as well. Thank you. I appreciate that. And we look forward to uh, seeing the great work from that. Um, I, I know that you took a significant hit in marketing and promotions, almost $800,000. Um, uh, director, how is this going to have an impact on you being able to uh, support other local businesses, market materials, get the word out, um, and just touch people with information? Yep, yep, yep. You know, even though we see decreases, uh, Chairman White, uh, we still know how to make sure that we are reaching the masses, that we are reaching our residents, uh, that we are reaching our creatives across all eight wards, that we are reaching those in our uh, underserved communities, uh, that they have access to all of the resources that we have here. So yes, we uh, we 
We know that we do have uh, some areas where we will take some reductions, but we also know creative ways to make sure that we continue uh, to, communi to communicate what we're doing here at the Office of Cable Television. I come from a communications background, as you know, um, as uh, the former communications director for not one, but two mayors, quite frankly. Uh, we know how to make sure that the word is getting in the right hands and to the right people and to continue to make sure that it reaches people who we wouldn't necessarily always reach. So we're always looking at different ways to do it. Yes, we are taking a reduction in some areas, but that does not mean that we will still not be able to complete the objective that we have here at our agency. Thank you. And we believe since, since 2016, you guys have awarded almost $11 million um, in the DC Film Rebate Fund. Mm -hmm. um, can you elaborate on how you plan to keep that going to reach those uh, companies and organizations doing this type of work? Absolutely. Uh, and I will... Uh bring up our associate director, Herbert Niles, once again, but I can tell you that the uh, roughly $840,000 that we have, uh, that we do have, we've been able to use to make sure that uh, our local creatives have a platform, that our local creatives are getting jobs and opportunities out of those funds, uh, that we are able to attract uh, again, more films and more television productions here uh, to the city. Uh, so those funds are sufficient for what we need to do, but I will turn this over to Associate Director Niles to elaborate more on that funding and how it's reaching a variety of film uh, and television uh, creatives. Thank, thank you, Director, and, and thank you, Chairman, for that question. So one of the things, despite some of the reductions that, that we had to adopt for the next fiscal year, you, you, you should notice that the one, one of the key line items that we kept uh, static and didn't have any decreases in was for the rebate fund. So just as we uh, have leveraged uh, approximately $842,000 for the rebate fund this year, we have submitted for the budget the same amount for next year. So we'll have no uh, reduction in the resources next year that we've been able to marshal this year. Got it. Um, Director, I know there's a big movement in the city and it's the mayor's vision to keep Google alive. Mm -hmm. um, and historically, it's been, you know, the soul of the city's music and it's been threatened um, time and time again. Um, and you guys have stepped up in a major way to showcase, uh, put them on. I even watched um, during the pandemic, the shows that were going on during the pandemic. That That's was right. amazing. Um, and I think you have something called the Go-Go's People Plan. Yes, that's correct. And we want to we want to hear about you know uh, how in this upcoming fiscal cycle you plan on keeping that movement alive and keeping the spirit of Go Go alive in the District of Columbia. Well, Chair, Chairperson why you stated that Go Go is the soul of the city. It is our official music. It's the official music of the capital of the world which is what the way we are able to use that funding to make sure the world knows about Gogo -Go music, that Gogo -Go music continues uh, not just here in the DC metropolitan area, but that we are touching all across our country and the world so that the world knows about our culture, about this music, about our bands and artists. We've been able to support our Gogo uh, -Go bands and local artists uh, even recently uh, as they appeared and South by Southwest. We've also been able to support their efforts globally. Uh, we know that some of our bands have traveled as far as a variety of countries on the continent of Africa. And that is the way we are able to ensure that uh, we are touching the world with our official music. And that is also bringing people back to our city to learn more about what we're doing here in our great city, to learn more about our culture, to learn more about our music. So we are very proud of what the Go Go People's Plan has been able to do. And we have greater ideas for what we will continue to do in the next fiscal year as well. Thank you. Uh, I know yesterday was the legendary Marvin Gaye's birthday. We yep. celebrated life and legacy uh, all right. over the city, but in Ward 8, we were at the Sandlot in Acostia, uh, yep. where we had some remarkable talent shown there. Um, 
But I did want to ask you about the, the, the violence in the city. You know, I think that we uh, are in a place where we can't leave it all on MPD, right? Mm -hmm. I think they have a role, but I think all government agencies and that all the residents of District Columbia, stakeholders, politicians have a role to ensure that people are safe in the district. Um, uh, is your agency doing anything to uh, address public safety at all in the district? We absolutely are, Chairperson White. Uh, you may have seen some of our programming uh, that touches on uh, public safety. Uh, and that was hosted by, it was a series hosted by uh, our radio personality and good friend, Easy Street of WHUR 96.3. Uh, he has had a series, uh, the name escapes me right now of the series, that touches on uh, public safety and violence. And it talks to uh, folks on the ground, quite frankly, and gets their stories and their thoughts and their concerns. And, you know, looking at potentially uh, what we can do together uh, to make a change, to make a difference. And we are looking at more opportunities to create programming that speaks to the heart of residents, that speaks to the heart of their concerns. Our youth, we know what they're thinking and feeling. And Chairperson White, you and I have been talking about uh, a program to address uh, the needs uh, and concerns of our youth, a Teen Summit-esque type of a program that we are looking to put together uh, in the next couple of weeks. We are working feverishly on that. I wanted to give you an update on that because we know that that's a concern for you. It's a concern for us. And it's a concern for the residents of the city. So we want to make sure that we are all working together. And we are. We've also produced programming for MPD as well. So it's not just a one-person thing. It's not just something that falls in the mayor's lap or in the council's lap. It's all of us in it together. So we're all looking at ways that we can uh, use the resources resources that we have uh, to touch on a, a issue uh, that is of a concern to us all and how we can uh, mediate that. Thank you. I appreciate that. I look forward to collaborating with that. Yep, um, absolutely. You know, I was a former member of uh, Teen Summit that was featured right well started right here in BET the show was filmed mm -hmm. in California but as you know it started right here in northeast DC black That's entertainment right. television so I would like to very much so be in another part of that um no question about got it got some feedback from poet mm -hmm. um and she wants to assist with that so we should follow up with that to make sure that we are giving our youth and young adults a voice yes hearing from them Yep. Um, and I want to thank you guys for joining us at our youth, at our youth at our youth hearings. Yep. We've had uh, two youth hearings on Saturday. That was phenomenal. Some great things came out of it, and we plan on making some adjustments to the budget based on the concerns of our youth in the district. Um, and I think that that's important. Absolutely. I do want to ask I... you. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to tell you on uh, just kind of echoing uh, your concerns and, you know, the conversations that you and I have had, as well as uh, conversations you and Poet have had and conversations that uh, Poet and I have had, uh, too. We are all looking forward to uh, creating that program that touches our youth. And just to just to give you a little lens into what's been going on here at OCTFME, just last week, uh, we had uh, alumni of uh, the original Black Entertainment Television here, here and the original Black Entertainment Television building. Many people don't know this is the original Black Entertainment Television, uh, but we had uh, some of the old hosts of BET's Rap City here, as well as Teen Summit right here in this building. So just know that um, your concerns about programming for our youth uh, and programs that kind of mirrored what we grew up on did not fall on deaf ears. We are working on that, and we will be uh, making sure we collaborate with you and coordinate with you on those efforts. Got it. Now, Director, DC is very diverse, as you know. How mm -hmm. is the agency uh, been able to cater to uh, languages and um, the, the growing diversity in the city? We work with our uh, Mayor's Office of Community Affairs uh, to make sure that we are getting programming out uh, for the diverse array of residents that we have across all eight wards of our city? That's a very good question. But we are looking to also create new programming as well that speaks to the needs and concerns of all communities here in our city.
Got it. Um, and director, will there be any new programming or funded that you're off uh, introducing in this upcoming fiscal budget that we don't know about yet? <clears throat> we have, excuse me, we do have some programming that will be coming up. We're flushing out the details as we speak. Um, you know, uh, I come from a television background uh, and a radio background. So I'm always thinking of, you know, keeping my ear to the ground. What do people want to see? What do people want to hear? We have dynamic programming that's on. We have uh, a couple of events coming up uh, actually in the coming weeks that will uh, speak to all of the new programming that we have. Uh, and then we have some additional programming that we're uh, going to be creating through the summer. So we can't wait to talk to you about that. Got it. I guess from you, Director, um, I wanted to know, um, we we normally have art all night. Mm -hmm. um, what is you guys' role in that? And uh, do you allocate, allocate resources to ensuring that this be a ph phenomenal night throughout the city? Absolutely. As a matter of fact, um... You know, it, it would be great if we could have our all day and night. We have some ideas there. Uh, and, you know, that also kind of kicks off our 202 Create Month. Uh, here uh, at OCTFME as well. So that is our opportunity to get a number of our uh, creatives uh, from across all eight wards on various platforms to showcase their art, to showcase their talent. Uh, so we are uh, looking, we are planning ahead uh, for that. That comes up in September, uh, the whole month of September. So yes, we allocate a variety of resources uh, to Art All Night and to 202 Creates Month. Tell us a little bit about what is 202 Creates and, and what's your goal and what you want to do with that. Because I think there are a lot of um, local businesses, local mm -hmm. uh, entrepreneurs that, that want to do so many things creatively in our communities that just don't know where to go and how to get in the know of what's going on. If you can speak to that, that'd be helpful to the residents. Absolutely. One, we want them to go to our website at entertain.dc.gov to learn more about all of the programs and resources that we have here at OCTFME. We also want you to go to our social media channels. We want you to go to uh, our Entertain uh, DC on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter, uh, as well as 202 Creates and also DC Radio uh, to see and, and, and get an idea of all of the things that we have going on here. And also, I got a pitch uh, that we do have a streaming network now. It's very new. It's called DCE. Uh, so we are uh, we are pulling together resources to make sure that we have programming there. But as it relates to those creatives here in the city, uh, we want to make sure that they know we support them, uh, that we have platforms to put them on, that we have activations that we are putting on, not just in 202 Creates Month also, uh, Chairman White. Uh, we have uh, events that we are planning right now, creative activations that are gonna be kicking off in the next couple of weeks. So we're not even waiting until 202 Creates Month starts. That actually falls under our creative affairs office us, uh, and Associate Director Kenesha Davey is with us, and she can share more details about it. But I can assure you uh, that we have uh, 202 Creates Month is in September, uh, and we provide that platform for all of our artists and bands and uh, singers and, you know, culinary artists and, you know, hairstylists. You know, when you think about art, art is fashion, art is food, art is so many things. Uh, so, and 202 Creates Month, we have that unique opportunity to give our local residents that platform, our local entrepreneurs that platform. But I do want to say that it's not just about this year, 202 Creates Month. We are kicking this off, activations across all eight wards, but specifically in the downtown area to support the comeback of our city and the comeback of our downtown in the next couple of weeks. And Associate Director Kenesha Davey, I'll turn it to you for additional details. Yes, thank you, Director. And hello, Chairperson White. How are you doing today? Yes, great. So, um, Director, you summed it up very well. So, two to create um, is something. So, we have our two to create month, but it highlights what we do all year 
background. And so a part of Tool to Create, um, we are able to do our biannual residency program where we're able to provide a, a program and a platform for residents to come and entrepreneurs to come and grow their business and their ideas to the next level. And so during that, that program, we're able to sit with about 20 to 25 residents that um, get accepted into the program to really give them some key tips and tools. And we bring in um, people from Shark Tank, people from other different um, government agencies that are able to really pour into the residents to help them grow their businesses. And on top of that, um, I know pre-pandemic, we did uh, co-working days, but just recently, um, as the director said, we do things all year round, but just recently we were actually able to relaunch our co-working day. And we actually partnered with the Moxie downtown DC and one of our past residents to host co-working days in February and March. And we will be um, highlighting another co-working space for the rest of the fiscal year as well. And so a uh, key goal for Tools Creates for the Creative Affairs Office for Entertain is really just to give creatives that platform, give them the resources and the tools so that they can be the best that they can be and grow and be seen and heard because we realize that we are responsible for giving them these platforms. And as we give them these platforms, you know, it's up to us to really continue to help them expand those platforms as well. And so we are proud and happy to be able to continue to do that work year round and into its crazement. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, Director, uh, there has been an ongoing conversation, I guess, from uh, uh, entertainment and, and athletes and throughout the city. Mm -hmm. um, we even heard it, heard it today by Ty. Um, do you all plan on doing anything involving youth sports? I know... Uh, Who's Mizzou News uh, has done some filming. I know that Chris has done some filming. I know that uh, uh, Boosie Vegas has mm -hmm. done some filming, mm -hmm. but I'm not sure if they're working with you guys in any capacity to expose our local talent, even, you know, some of our, not even just sports, but some of our debate teams that are happening throughout the city as well. Absolutely. Uh, we do have our DKN Sports uh, so uh, we encourage everyone to take a look at that. So we're able to give uh, our local athletes a platform. Uh, so, you know, we have our uh, DCN for the mayor, DCC for the council, and then we have DKN. And that's where you can find a number of our sports programming where we're able to put our local athletes uh, on the spotlight. Uh, and we are also looking at ways to grow that as well. As Ty said, uh, we're looking outside of our norm. We're also doing things with our uh, Beltway Battles. Boxing is back here in the city. Uh, so we're looking at ways to highlight that. We have a local um, a professional athlete uh, who is represented by Floyd Mayweather and Mayweather Promotions, Jalil Hackett. Uh, we have our very own Dion Dub here uh, in our Office of Cable Television, Film, Music, and Entertainment that's also been doing some sports programming. So yes, we are looking at uh, new ways of also uh, expanding that platform for local sports and local athletes, but we have been able uh, to spotlight them on the platforms that we currently have as well. Got it. And what do we access DKN Sports, Director? That's on our DKN channel. So here where we are, uh, that would be channel 99. So we have 13, 16, and 99. And on 99, let me tell you, you're going okay. to find all kinds of diverse programs, but you can find sports on there as well. Okay. So you all are filming the games. What, what's what's on? I'm not familiar with this. I'm, I'm sorry, director. I got to check this out. Yeah, we just recently had uh, the Georgetown women's um, a really great documentary we we're doing there. Then we have um, our MFL um, program that's on our D.C. radio. Uh, there's a number of different platforms we're using to promote sports here in the city. Uh, but you will find programming on both uh, our television as well as our radio uh, platforms. Okay. All right. Well, thank we you. We were even represented out there at the Super Bowl. Yeah. We're everywhere. At the Super Bowl. At, at the Super Bowl. <laughs> okay. I didn't know that. <laughs> All right. 
as a so I want to thank everyone who testified today. Um, I know we have a number of people who have received grants, funding, and support um, from your agency that was at the performance oversight hearing. If you have not uh, been able to testify today, we would, would like to submit a written testimony to be included in the official record. You can email uh, this committee, which is the Committee on Recreation, Libraries, and Youth Affairs at ryA at dccouncil.us. Thank you, Director, and your team. Um, Thank you, Chairperson. We look forward to following up and look forward to being a part of the great things you're doing with the agents under your leadership. Our record will close Monday, April the 10th, 2023 at 5.30 p.m. This is the agency budget site hearing and it's concluded with no other business before us. The time is now 1.05 p.m. And this meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, Director. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.